Alright guys, Sajko here back again today and I'm sure all of you have noticed this looks very different to normal. The reason is, I've just come back from London and on the train on the way back, for some stupid reason, I was lost in the source to be honest. I was you know, listening to some music, just thinking, oh finally I'm home, like it's been a tough weekend, like really tiring, I honestly walked so long to and from the venue all the way around, like really tiring weekend. Obviously it ran over quite a lot on the final date as well, which we'll talk about probably in a video tomorrow or whenever. But for some reason I just left my bag on the train. Hopefully, it will we'll be able to get it sorted. It didn't have too many um, stops to go afterwards to where it terminated. So hopefully, I'll be able to get it back over the coming days. But for now, I'm going to record these videos in this kind of format on an old laptop I have. Hopefully, this will still work out. The same information will be here. Just the quality isn't quite the same level that it would be. Hopefully, we'll be able to get that sorted. But still some content for you guys. Um, just an unfortunate situation. You know, it happens, I guess. These things happen. I've just got to be more careful, to be honest. Um, that was really stupid. But regardless, let's get into the video. Lucky if you guys enjoy. Subscribe if you're you as always first of all just wanted to say if i met you this weekend if we said hello if you just saw me or whatever I said hi in passing. Thanks a lot. Fantastic weekends. Um, really, really enjoyed it. If you guys didn't come to this one and you're thinking about, oh, do I come to the June one? I'd highly recommend. Like, it's honestly such a good time. Um, so many great people and the environment is fantastic here in the UK as well. Of course, people have said things about what the crowd is like and all these things. Um, you know, people, maybe maybe it's uh, too harsh or, you know, to what degree is it just play fun or whatever. So uh, I wanted to talk about that and address it a little bit today as well. Maybe in the latter half of the video because firstly, let's go through the results. So let's crack on. First of all here we have London Call of Duty Challengers Open. Now there were some real issues with this to be honest and I do want to do a video on what they could do better for the June event. So Singularity win. Big shout outs to the guys um, over here of course. So you've got Bids, you've got Insight, you've got Chain, you've got uh, Detain and you've got Maple. Of course, uh, Analyst, Sweeper EU, Benji behind the scenes doing all the work over there. So, yeah, fantastic stuff. They win the back-to-back -back for Minnesota. And now here, um, the real issues a lot of people were having with this was this from Defrag. Because the event was set up such that you had the main stage at the front. And then at the back, you had the challenges. Like, Sweet Caroline was blasting out at full volume. The guys trying to clutch a 1v1 and a round 11 couldn't hear anything at the back of the stadium. They don't have the same noise-cancelling equipment for the, uh, the amateur stuff than they do right at the pro stuff. So, obviously wasn't ideal by any means. Difficult situation for a lot of the amateur guys, but you know, definitely some lessons to be learned going forwards. On the whole, I think last London event was better last year. I think, honestly, last event in, last year in London, like uh, May, um, early May, whatever it was, that was like the best weekend of the year, to be honest. It was so damn good. Like, I'd give that a 9.5 out of 10. Gfinity run it. Um, they're really good. The crown engagement and everything. The way they set up the venue was fantastic as well. This time, there was less people in attendance, I think, because it's early year. The, um, the schedule had just been changed recently to this tournament format, so people haven't really planned it too far in advance. Hopefully the June one will be a better turnout as well. The turnout was still pretty good. It was still pretty buzzing, but it wasn't quite as good as last year. And I think the format wasn't as great as it could have been as well. So definitely some things to take uh, going forwards from the guys who run the event and maybe next time it can be even better as well. Here we go then. So let's go on to the first series. Seattle Surge versus Grillers. Another thing I thought was a bit of an issue with this weekend's event was the fact that we didn't have a Bravo station, which meant that games, not necessarily this one, this was an exciting game. We had two round 11s. Seattle Surge win it in a game five round 11 fashion and Eggs gets sent home, which is kind of funny, the, the banter with the crowd in that sense. But part of the issue was that some of the games that are typically not so entertaining and you, know, you really want the big players, the big name you know, teams to be up on main stage. That's maybe why the average viewership for this event suffered a little bit despite the uh, the total viewership being really good which we'll look at here in a second but this you know the decent viewership but there's some games which maybe people don't necessarily are too interested in of course it does feel like yes Activision has to give every team every franchise their screen time but at the same time it, you know it, it's um, it'd be nice if there was a Bravo station as well so some games that people don't care so much about they can have that going on on the side while there's a big game on main stage and that would also open up opportunities to have a double elimination bracket when it goes into the final semi-final finals rather than it just being a really quick fire thing. But I do understand the reason why they did it. So Seattle Surge, they lose the first two maps to Los Angeles Grillers. Then they turn the screw and make the comeback in the domination, the hard point. And then they win the Gunrunner Search and Destroy, like round 11 fashion. Like not much you could say about it here. Um, but yeah, Seattle Surge get the better of Grillers. Grillers go out of the tournament. Then you have Legion versus Ultra, which is a game that, you know, it was honestly, it was kind of exciting to a degree. But there was some, honestly, some great plays from uh, Paris throughout this. They won the latter three maps here. And they really put on a clinic as well against New York in the next one. But this is a game that not necessarily everyone wanted to, to see completely on the main stage. It would have been nice if you could have that maybe on Bravo and then on main stage you had another game going and then there'd be more action going on in the arena. 
Then you have Empire versus Surge. They put on a clinic here. They won the domination or did Surge. But Empire bring it back and win all the hard points and the search and destroy to make that happen as well. So Seattle Surge are out of the tournament. Toronto are out of the tournament at this point. And then New York get knocked out of the tournament by the Paris Legion in a really swift 3 0 fashion. A couple of the maps were close, but the search and destroy on Ramazza was nowhere of the sorts. Paris Legion really ran away with it. New York once again not having a great weekend. Paris really bounced back very, very nicely indeed from the first day where they had a pretty rough showing, to be honest. They bounced back quick and make things work over in that facet. So then we had this game, Royal Ravens versus Empire. Here we go on to the semi-finals as I wanted to talk about. So this was uh, this got to the real crunch time of the tournament. There was only three games left, two semi-finals and then the grand final. And yeah, disappointingly for London Ravens, it just didn't work out. The first two maps were, were incredibly close. Royal Ravens honestly did outplay Empire on the first half point. It, it's maybe slightly closer than um, than it should have been in terms of the way the final hill rotated and all of that kind of stuff. Royal Ravens win it in a very close fashion. And then the Gunrunner Search and Destroy, they walk away with that one in around 11 as well. And you kind of think, okay, it's meant to be at this point. Wiskin is absolutely frying the entire weekend. Like, if you look at the KDs, which we'll have a look at in a second, Wiskin, um, you know, MVP as we were chanting at him of course this weekend he was far and away like even in the respawns that London were losing he was still far and away the best player and honestly the rest of the guys in London if they can step up their game just a little bit and Wiskin keeps playing like this they can be a, a top uh, challenging contender team and really, you could have said they should have been in the finals here, given they do get reverse sweeps. They lose the domination in the hard point on Hackney Yard. Um, it was interesting, right, given that Hackney, Hackney and Piccadilly, they're all the maps that are based in London in the UK. So yeah, interesting that, that those are the maps we end up losing, given all the memes we've had around that and all that kind of stuff. But in the end, those two maps weren't particularly close. And then it came down to the Piccadilly search and destroy. And really a couple of key rounds that we threw away. We went down 2-0. Then I think we brought it back to like 4-4. Four, four. We lost a crucial round. And then I think we lost our final defense as well. We all kind of got picked up. It was pretty poor showing, to be honest. There was definitely some, uh, some mistakes made from the Royal Ravens side get reverse swept as we did to New York yesterday, right? So we had the whole uh, the whole run back that the Royal Ravens ended up doing here. They end up losing out in the end. And Wiskin was pretty devastated, like understandably given the performance he put up. This was the series performance. Who can place to really the standout guys here? But look at this. Wiskin has a 1.5 KD. The rest of the guys on uh, on London Royal Ravens really not putting in uh, the same kind of performance. So if he can keep up if he can keep up this level, um which is which is doubtful that he can keep playing this well, but still he is on a an unbelievable level right now and uh, it's a shame we didn't get to see him in the final in the other semi-finals we had this then we had Paris versus Chicago and really impressive by Paris I don't think they lost a uh, hard point maybe they lost one hard point the entire weekends but against the Huntsman they win both hard points honestly in a um, really convincing fashion Dens was the standout of this series I thought Shocks had a great map one but Dens all day for Paris was just superb on this championship Sunday but in the search and destroy that's where the Huntsman won it and you've got two back Thug Lord over there he did a tweet saying like S&D wins championships baby and look at this S&D 6-2 6-0 that's so Super impressive stuff from the Huntsman. And if they keep playing Search and Destroy like that, they're going to be a very, very hard team to beat indeed. Because it's difficult enough to take a respawn off them as, uh, as uh, Paris managed to manage here. You know, they're taking both hard points. But arguably, in a normal series, you'd expect maybe to go 1-1 one, one or something like that. And then the Search and Destroy, of course, is really where it kicks off. So here we go then, onto the Grand Finals. And it was an interesting situation because this was super late at night. We had the whole overrun because we had the hype battle that came on. Um, you know, Mad Cat was playing in the open bracket. He was losing in a game five round 11 fashion to train hard. Then he had to go backstage, get ready for this hype battle, get brought out onto the main stage with Nicky Romero, with, um, I forget the name of the uh, the footballer from Newcastle who was uh, pairing up with Doug Center Martin. We had that on main stage, bit of gunfight. In theory, I like that kind of idea because it gets more casuals into the game. Like it's easier to say, oh, yeah, I play gunfight some pros are playing maybe i'll tune in for this for a little bit longer it kind of makes sense at the same time the fact that that was delayed so long due to the mad cat situation and i guess they wanted like london versus new york kind of vibes rather than um rather than getting like tommy in. you could have got tommy in to do it even though he's with the empire technically he's still from the uk of course so that could have worked as well but I really delayed things. And some other delays meant that this grand final was finished pretty much at quarter past 11 at night. To the point where everyone in the venue was so tired and people were trying to get home. Like the crowd 
honestly emptied out before the grand finals, which is something you never really see at events, but people, like, they weren't expecting to have to stay another night, because it was initially advertised that this event would finish by, you know, at least half nine or, or eight or something like that. I think it was meant to finish, I think the final game was meant to finish at eight, and um, so people were thinking, okay, like, um, or meant to start at eight, so people were thinking, okay, half nine, ten, I can see what the last train is, work it out like that. Pretty much they missed the entire last series if that was the situation. Not ideal at all, definitely some lessons to be learned there. But also at the same time, it didn't feel as much like a tournament because, as RST says, we're looking in a second, like, there wasn't a trophy that was handed out or anything, which really was a surprise to me. I talked before the tournament as how, like, is this going to be considered a championship victory? I think most people are, but at the same time, there was no trophy. So, um, so you know, we'll have to see. But regardless, Huntsman versus Azir, or Huntsman versus uh, Empire on the Dallas Cave Hardpoint. This is a really fantastic uh, matchup. These first two maps were super, super close. Honestly, it could have very much gone either way. Clay and Crimson go off right here, but the Young Gun's not quite performing right now. And, um, you know, that's fantastic 1v3 clutch here that Gunless managed to pull out as well. So, yeah, in this round, honestly, it was super close. Got kind of unlucky, did uh, Empire in a way, because Hunt. So Gunless like jumped up a couple of times. He missed the jump, which meant that he honestly he made the timing not work for Clayster. So Clayster thought that uh, he was going to be going the whole way around because he failed the jump up. So probably if he hits the jump up, then uh, Clayster actually kills him here and we don't have the same situation. But this is the final scoreboard. They win it in a 3-0 fashion. Huntsman, clearly the team to beat right now out of these eight. Of course, Atlanta Phase are going to be the, the team that really gives them the best run for the money. But as you can see here, the Young Guns really not performing right now. Close to had a decent series, but on the side of uh, Huntsman, like Envoy had a fantastic map as well, and RST's really turned up here. Difficult to say anything against this team because right now, they're super frying. In terms of long-term potential, you do feel like, you know, Dallas, uh, you know, they should be a team that improves throughout the season, whereas, you know, it's, we're yet to be seen with the with the Chicago situation of course they did do really well last season in the early times as well at the scump uh, well scump's team and especially on optic gaming obviously a very different team now Matthew Piper formal kids are so much better online ha 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 which is just uh, this is just fantastic drama like we love to see stuff like this he just has to go at Iliad shots here these guys who are dominating online when it comes to land environment formal's not too happy with their performances uh, Clayster says this it was fun yet again I thought we had something special last year but you were ruthless this year and all in good fun generally was a blast other than losing so yeah last year everyone was supporting Clayster and the United this year it was very much a different story but you know it's all in good jest right some of the chants did go you know to the next level like shots he's in the showers those chants like I don't know why um, that was even said to be honest never going to condone anything like that there was some things that are a bit risque but you kind of in order to have a good crowd with good banter and stuff you kind of have to walk the line a little bit sometimes you're going to eat over it to, to some degree so you know it's uh, honestly it was it was good fun and I prefer a crowd like that than a crowd that be you know, really dull and no one was saying anything. Envoy's clearly, um, you know, counting it as a championship. Finally got the first one. These are the top 10 players. So Octane, Wuskins, like these stats are just insane. Like Wuskins and uh, Octane, especially Dens as well. And uh, Clayster had a fantastic performance as well on the side of the Huntsman. 111,000 peak viewers as well, which honestly is really damn good going for Chicago versus Dallas. So impressive stuff. The average viewership was down, but a lot of that was due to the event starting super, super early in the morning in the States. And yeah, there was a hard car off time for the venue. I remember this last year as well. We just had to get out super, super quickly after everything ended. And um, yeah, as RST said, there was no even trophy that they walked off with at the end of the day. Here we go then. These are what the standings look like. Huntsman, Paris, Royal Ravens, Empire. Doesn't really tell the whole story given that not everyone's played the same amount of series, of course. We're going to see next weekend in Atlanta how this goes for. But Huntsman, clearly right now, the team to beat. And Atlanta phase are going to give them the best run for their money, I would imagine. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Lucky if you did, subscribe if you're new as always. Thanks for watching. I'll see you probably in a similar format tomorrow and then well hopefully I'll get my laptop back and we can start working it from there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.